The numbers were way better than expected, honestly. And these numbers put this vaccine up there with some of our most efficacious vaccines. Uh, in the Pfizer trial, there were roughly 40,000 participants and they were split roughly equally between the two groups. So 20,000 people got the vaccine and 20,000 people got a placebo. Nobody in either group knew what they got. They didn't know if they got the real vaccine. They didn't know if they got the placebo. The data overwhelmingly was positive. In the placebo group, 162 people got COVID. So people that didn't get the shot, 162 people got COVID. In the group where people got the vaccine, only eight people got COVID. They also looked at cases of severe COVID, which they defined as anybody really being sick, going to the ICU, those sort of things. In the placebo group, there were nine cases of severe COVID. In the vaccine group, there was only one. Overall, the vaccine was 95% efficacious, which is just really good. In the Moderna group, there were a little less patients, 30,000. They were split evenly, 15,000, 15,000 between placebo and vaccine. In the placebo group, there were 185 cases of COVID, while in the vaccine group, there were only 11 cases of COVID. In terms of severe COVID, in the placebo group, there were 30 cases and zero in the vaccine group. And overall, the vaccine was 94% efficacious. And so overall, and these are just phenomenal numbers. And as far as reading journals and statistical analysis and math in general, that's just not how my brain tends to function. But looking at the charts to go along with this, I mean, you don't honestly don't even need statistical analysis for this. These are just overwhelming numbers of good. Uh, but if you look at a chart for this, if you have number of cases over here, and you have time here. The vaccine people are chugging along in time. Time's going by for all of us, right? And nobody's really getting sick. The cases are not going up, it stays flat. For the placebo group, the line literally is headed straight upward. Time is passing and people are just continuing to get sick. The cases are just climbing. The other important thing with thinking about looking at not just does it prevent COVID overall, but does it prevent severe COVID, even if it doesn't prevent COVID overall. If we can prevent severe COVID, if we can take away the global threat that COVID is and make it more of a nuisance, like a common cold, that might be something that's manageable. That might be something that give a, gives us more of a normalcy of life. As the vaccines start rolling out to the public, there's no end in sight to these questions. Visit firstprimarycare.com to find a doctor you can easily connect with via text, phone, or in person.